everyone, I'm Alana Pius, and welcome to IGN's VR Mechanics 101, presented by Oculus. Tackling exploration and movement in VR has presented some unique challenges that are exclusive to the platform, namely VR sickness, which is something I personally am pretty susceptible to. It's an odd sensation, a lot like actual motion sickness, that comes as a result of your brain thinking you're moving without actually feeling that sense of movement. This is called sensory conflict theory, and the basic science is that sensory inputs from what you see, your sense of balance, and what your muscles are doing are all at odds with what you subconsciously expect based on your real-world experiences. It's pretty fascinating and actually a huge testament to the success of VR that we can trick ourselves into thinking VR is real. Let's see how well you can move. Teleportation has been one of the most popular ways to allow players to move in VR, as well as something that's hugely accessible that almost anyone can do. The Unspoken is an example of a teleportation-based game that manages to present the mechanic in a way that actually maintains the lore of that universe and thus doesn't break immersion at all. Playing as a wizard as part of some underground magical society in a gorgeous alternate reality Chicago, teleporting is a natural extension of the rest of your magical abilities. When you point at one of the platforms you want to move to, it'll start to light up, and then a tonally consistent, slightly gothic looking symbol will appear on the ground with a big blue glow right before you jump. It's easy and all that's really required of you is to identify a platform, point at it, and click to teleport. The Unspoken adds in some challenge by giving enemy wizards the ability to destroy your platforms, cutting down the amount of positions you can attack from. In that, it's smartly integrated and the consistent sound design helps too. Another really seamless way to integrate movement into VR is room scale VR, where you can physically walk around a real world space. This has its limitations, of course, because you're wearing a headset that needs to be connected to a PC and cameras can only track your movement so far. But games like Fantastic Contraption have figured out the ultimate solution. By presenting a confined virtual space for players to move around in, their movements in the real world won't be too dramatic either. The game largely takes place on small grassy levels and gives you the ability to zoom in and out so you don't need to physically walk around a whole lot. Fantastic Contraption has you grab different items and put them all together to create bizarre creative vehicles and contraptions that will allow you to solve environmental puzzles. In that, most of what you'll be doing is picking things up and arranging them together rather than physically walking. Other popular VR games like Job Simulator use the same technique and it works really well. For an effective take on a more traditional type of in-game movement, let's look to Kronos. Come, sit. If you don't already know, Kronos is an atmospheric RPG that's kind of a mix between The Legend of Zelda and Dark Souls, but with a fixed camera that's similar to that of the early Resident Evil games. It's a full-length game that could exist outside of VR, but the extra level of immersion we can get from the Oculus Rift gives Kronos an edge. It has you explore the dungeons and hub areas in third person, moving your character with thumbsticks on your controller, but slightly panning the camera, which is fixed against a wall, by moving your head. Looking left will show you where you came from and right might show you where you need to go, but that position is always fixed. This is like giving you a front row seat into the epic, beautiful adventures your character goes on, and that's a pretty comfortable place to be. So that was a look at how three different games handle environment exploration in VR. For more Mechanics 101 and VR in general, keep it right here on IGN.